What the f are NFTs? Beeple's the first 5,000 days sold for a record 69,346,250 dollars on March 11th, 2021. Holy f Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful traders. The goal of this channel is to empower you guys with the knowledge and resources to help you get to that next level. So if you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and turn on the notification bell as we continue to spread mass knowledge and cryptocurrencies adoption. Alrighty guys, so in today's video, we are talking NFTs. And to do that, I am bringing someone who is very, very familiar in this space. V has an XR solutions company that specializes in creating digital assets for VR and AR applications. Currently, her company, Vivid Reality Solutions, is focused on bridging the gap between XR and crypto. So let's jump right in with V. Alrighty, guys. So what's going on? I'm here with V from Vivid Reality. V, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. I'm super excited to speak about NFTs. As everyone knows, it's been blowing up. My DMs have been blowing up with people just asking me about everything NFT. You know what I mean? And I haven't really had an answer for most things since I haven't myself, you know, dove into that space yet. So that's why today I decided to bring you on an expert in this space to, um, you know, tell the people to answer all their questions, basically. So I'm, I'm going to ask you the questions that they've been asking me. But before we jump into that, uh, give us a little bit about yourself and what you do. OK, cool. So uh, my name is V. Uh, I co-founded a company called Vivid Reality. Um, we are an XR solutions company, so that means that we create assets and design solutions for anything that has to do with extended reality. So VR, AR, mixed reality. And what's really cool about that is that VR utilizes a lot of 3D objects and 3D environments and all these things can be turned into NFTs. So really what started out as, as being a specialist in in creating digital assets has evolved into you know creating what i like to call purposeful nfts and we can dive into that or useful right more more useful nfts right. and we can dive into that a little bit later that all sounds insane just thinking about some of the stuff you just said but i don't want to i don't want to jump in so fast so first thing so the first thing i'm gonna start off with the first question i have and i know most people watching right now with well, the first thing they want to know is what the hell are nfts cool yeah so let's just start with the basic acronym nft stands for non-fungible token and fungibility makes something interchangeable so this is not fungible what does that mean if i have ten dollars and you have ten dollars and we swap ten dollars i don't care because i can still go to the store and buy ten dollars worth of things if i have a ten dollar bill and you have two five dollar bills or ten singles right? They're still interchangeable. I can still take your 10 singles and give you my $10 bill and go to the store and buy $10 worth of items. That is not how NFTs work. The way I like to look at NFTs is in terms of contract and certificate. Mm. And Ethereum is the currency or the fuel that fuels the transaction. So don't look at NFT as a currency is in terms of like, I have five NFTs, I have five Ethereum. That's, that's not how it works. The NFT represents a digital asset that is encrypted into the Ethereum blockchain. What happens in, in a world full of digital assets, right? It becomes very hard to prove what the original asset was. So for example, if I'm a photographer, right? And I upload my photography on my website. Unless I watermark it and absolutely destroy the image for, for the for the buyer, mm. it, nothing is really stopping someone in another state or another country to just save that file, 
and sell it in their market. They can literally go and print a hundred copies and sell it in their little store in Arizona, and right. I will never know about it. Right. You know. So what what NFT does, what NFTs are, are almost a solution for this lack of of scarcity in the digital world. It's so it's so easy to copy and paste things in right. the digital world. So what it does is it takes the digital file. So an NFT will always represent a digital file. So it does that. And then the second part is it embeds the digital file with a with a smart contract. Okay. And so you want to look at as an at an NFT as a certificate and and a contract. So the certificate says you can look on the on the blockchain and see that the NFT was uploaded by this person originally. And every time it gets sold after that, you can see, you can verify every transaction, everyone that has held it in between the original upload and the current holder. Okay. That all can be verified on the blockchain. So now we have a proof of a proof of authenticity, right? right? A proof of originality. That's the first thing. The next thing is that it embeds the NFT. The NFT is embedded with a smart contract, meaning if this, then this, or when this, then this, right? Right. So if I want to sell you a Picasso, mm -hmm. okay, there's there there can be some middle middle men in between, right? A couple a couple right. of uh, third parties, uh, maybe a lawyer, uh, maybe you know you have to get something shipped to you that can mm -hmm. take a couple of days, a couple of delays, maybe I got to pay the carrier, things like that. So what the NFT does is it automates that entire process. As soon as I send you a certain amount of Ethereum, you automatically transfer ownership to me. I hold the piece in my wallet. There's no third party. There is no delay. There's no wait time. It's just, it's an immediate thing. So right. you want to, yeah. So you want to look at NFT as a certification of authenticity, therefore okay. making something scarce or legitimizing its scarcity, right? Um, publicly. And you want to look at it as as a contract, an automated contract or a smart contract. Yeah, so that's that's why it's built on the Ethereum blockchain so that it, to take advantage of the smart contract so that, like you said, if this, then this, right? Correct. Okay, that definitely makes a lot of sense. So that pretty much covers, you know, exactly what the NFTs are um, and how basically it works, right? So I actually just got a notification on my phone that says Beeple. Do you know what Beeple yeah. is? Yes, I do. So Beeple NFT auction closes at record setting $69.3 yeah. million. Dollars. Correct. What in Correct. the hell just happened? Like, so, yeah. so I guess because of this, and this is literally live right now, just as I'm looking at it. So I guess like my next question is, how and why do NFTs hold the value? So that's a, that's a great question. And I'm, I'm actually really glad you got that notification because um, it's a perfect example of how, of how prominent NFTs are becoming and how they're kind of seeping into the physical world. So I believe it was sold at Christie's, right? Yeah. So Christie's is a very, very well-known um, art, art seller, right? They're an auction house, um, art gallery auction house. And, um, uh, you know, they've sold things from Andy Warhol's to, to, to Picasso's and mm -hmm. and Monet's and things like that. So Beeple is actually an artist that I've been following for years. And he's really awesome because he makes these very provocative political statements with his art. Mm -hmm. um, he does he does a lot of things with with uh, Trump and Kim Jong Il and uh, Hillary Clinton and just very like this provocative, these provocative statements on on politics mm -hmm. and Beeple is actually probably the the poster child of nfts right now That's um crazy. he's he's made an insane amount of money over the last month since um selling nfts and so to the point where now christie's which is one of the most renowned galleries in the world mm -hmm. has sold one of his pieces um and for a staggering 69.3 million that's insane 69 million in and yeah like you said at christie's yes absolutely and so i mean with with regards to this stuff if you want to look at right now the the use case of nfts is art and so when we're looking at investing you have to look at it the same way as 
people were investing in art mm -hmm. right like there's some there's some artists that they're just they're just well known like a picasso yeah. will always be a picasso a warhol will always be a warhol um and a monet will always be a monet right and and, and they just they just hold that value in the market when it comes to these new age artists there's a couple of rock stars like people right now mm -hmm. uh and there's a couple of notable musicians and artists that have been have been making nfts and selling because of their name in the music industry right right uh but really when it comes to investing in art and nfts as digital art and nfts as digital art it's it's your own assessment what do i think this is worth do i think this will appreciate over time or right. not yeah that's that's insane. I pulled up here the tweet from Christie's about this. This is just crazy to me. You know what I mean? But do you think NFTs are a good investment overall? That's a great question. It's like I said, with the current use case, it's it's about you and how you assess certain art pieces, where you want to invest your money, right? right. So for example, there's a really famous uh, uh, NFT. If you want to look it up, it's called CryptoPunks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of it yeah. it's literally uh pixel art of of different heads different heads and they're just like you know some of these literally go for 30k for That's one insane yeah some of them go for 30k some of them go for the, the prices vary you know right. and so it's really about it's very similar to the art market right like it's it's like it's inflated right it it's a risk takers game mm -hmm. however it has a lot of beautiful attributes and, and a lot of beautiful ways that it can change the market forever. Right. And I like to talk about that as far as far as investment goes, because there is something that it does for the artists, for content creators that we don't get in the in the art world and in physical reality at the moment. Right. And what that is, is the opening up of uh, secondary and tertiary markets and so forth. And so in that case, yes, it is. It is a good investment because it is a market that I feel is one that we ought to support, right? Right, as, a, as, a, as an evolving society. So, because NFTs are on the blockchain, they can be verified every time a transaction is done. And so, one of the things that you can do when you mint your first NFT or your second, or when you mint your NFTs, mm -hmm. is you can embed the the NFT with a percentage for royalties, okay. right? So every time, so I can put, I can post. Okay, I want to sell this piece of art for one for one ETH, and I want to put a ten percent uh, royalty fee. Right okay. now, every time it gets sold and resold, even if I if forgot about it ten years later, right. I still get money automatically transferred to my. To wow, my wallet. I had that. I had no idea about. So as an artist, you sell your nfts and then you implement into it when you're mincing it a royalty so every time they resell it you get a percentage of whatever they resold it for absolutely without a middleman without That's any amazing. you can literally be making money in 20 years from now off of something that you sold 20 years earlier and that's something that artists weren't able to do before you weren't able to have a relationship with your art you know once you kind of right. sold a piece that's it it was done sold it. you don't right. know what happens to it you right. know and so here you're able to track you're able to see who holds it now like maybe bill gates will hold you know one of my pieces in in five years from now and i'm like oh my god it ended up in this space you know right. and i and i get and i get money off of it right you know so it's this continued relationship between the artist and the art and the people that are purchasing it that that i think is a really dope phenomenon that that's, we're seeing in the that's amazing see i had no idea about that part so you get royalties on it that's that's pretty crazy. Wow. It is. And another another thing to think about within that realm is, you know, what it can do for, for the music industry. Right. Right. So at any given moment, there's about $250 billion of uncollected royalties in the music industry. Right. Because either they don't know who to pay out, they don't want to pay them out. You know, like there's no one to really, it's very hard to monitor every single time a song is played and, you know, right. there's all kinds of politics and things like that involved. Right. So as as an artist as a musician if i'm uploading my own music into the market and i'm embedding it with you know a five percent or two percent or one percent royalty whatever i want it's like every time that song gets played it's verified it's automatically 
it's all automatically embedded in the smart contract that I'm going to get money out of that. Right. So that's insane. So now that you speak about um, music, I know that uh, Kings of Leon just uh, for their album used NFTs. So Correct. how how exactly um, like what is it that they use the NFTs for um, for this album? Like I, I didn't really understand that part. I read a little bit about this last week. Mm -hmm. And what I understood was, well, first of all, you know, a lot of artists now are very interested in getting into the space. And so they're using NFTs to promote themselves and right. their, their music and also just be ahead of the game. Right. You know? So what I understood though, is that they're incentivizing people to, to purchase these artworks by saying, okay, the highest bidder will get what's called a golden ticket. And that's, um, I believe it was like four front row seats to every Kings of Leon concert in life for eternity. Wow. Okay. Right? That's crazy. And they get like a bunch of free merch for every show and a private driver and things like that. So this incentivizes people to like bid very high. It's really exciting. Like first you get you get an NFT, you get some artwork, and second of all, you get all this all this free merch, all these exciting right. Right. Uh, all these exciting incentives to to engage with the artists more, right? That's insane just seeing where this space is currently at and where it's been like where it can potentially go like it's crazy as we see it grow we're literally watching this space grow in the matter of like because it's been around for for a while already right yeah. but it's just now that it's starting to pick up steam uh in the mainstream yes and i'm glad you brought up the point of where it can go and I know that we're just getting people familiarized with where it's at right now, but there are some really important points to, to look at as far as where it can go. Mm -hmm. It's utility. And so one of those things is, as I said before, and an, an NFT represents a digital file. Right. So you want to think about it as metadata in the back, cyberpunk, world in the front right. you know crypto kitty in the front metadata in the back right okay so right now we're using it for art that's where the craze is that's where that's where pop culture kind of launched launched this whole concept mm -hmm. but the way i view nfts as being utilized in the future is in the form of data packets okay now the difference between dollars mm -hmm. and data is that data has a very potent utility outside of its just transactional thing, right? So money is powerful because it's transactional. The right. more money I have, the more transactions I can, right. I can make. When it comes to data, you can also use it to make transactions, but data in itself is useful. Like right. code is useful. You can create things with it, right. right? I can use data on you to sell you more things. I can use data on you to strategically plan my next move around you or your demographic or whatever it is, you know, like data has power outside of its transactional utility. Right. And so like one of, one of the concepts that I really like is, is this idea of, of creating a data package that I can then sell to a company as opposed to, you know, maybe Facebook taking my data and selling it to a company, right? So let's, let's just example. I have a group of 10 friends and we're all gamers. Mm. Okay. We're just like a group of gamers and we account for about 80 to 120 K a year in gaming expenses. Like we, we buy, right. right. Um, between the hardware, the software, the in-game add-ons, the 10 of us, we spend about 80 to 120 K a year. Now, when we buy the most, how we buy the most, what incentivizes to buy the most? When do we buy the least? All this information is useful for a game developing company. Right. All this information is useful for a manufacturer, for a marketing company. This is useful data. So if we as a society learn how to harness our data and create packages, we can then say, okay, you want this information? It's one ETH. Right. And that becomes your NFT. Right. That becomes your data packet as opposed to a crypto kitty. Right. You can sell it. Same goes for medical information. Instead of having to go to the doctor and fill out 20 pages of how dizzy and how many headaches I've had in the last week, you right. know, it, you just have this data packet with all your medical information, with your birth certificate on, right. uh, birth certificate on it. And then 
you can share that with right. your with your medical provider. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, or you can share so. that information with medical research. Right. If you have a, a certain condition, you don't want to share with everyone. It's a private key, but you can share it with a certain uh, medical research facility for the purpose of a certain study. Right. right? And you can sell that. Right. It makes sense. It makes so much sense. So I guess for someone that's just getting started in this in this space that's brand new, doesn't really know too much about it. How would they go about buying and trading NFTs? So I actually have two awesome videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I can share the link. So I actually created two videos with uh, a gentleman by the name of Gus GG. He's what the industry calls an OG crypto artist. That means he's been creating crypto for at least five years, crypto art for at least five years. Uh, basically, the first thing you want to do is get a an Ethereum wallet. Mm -hmm. Okay, different cryptocurrencies have different wallets. Some do a variety, but so the one that I like to use is MetaMask. That's okay. a really common one. Uh, that is a specifically Ethereum wallet because as we mentioned, NFTs are backed by Ethereum. They're on the Ethereum blockchain. So you have to have a crypto uh, wallet that is um, an Ethereum wallet. Right. So MetaMask is the first thing. The second thing is you can go on a number of platforms, um, OpenSea.io, Nifty Gateway, Rarible, and then there's a few other ones that are harder to get into. A very well-known one is super rare. Um, Codex is like a high-end luxury, uh, you know, NFT, right. NFT minting site. Um, so you can go on any of those websites and, and the process is very self-explanatory. It's literally like uploading a file, uploading the information on it, and then how much royalties, you know, the description, and then you, and then you mint it. Right. The only thing that you have to make sure to have is a little bit of ETH in your wallet because you have to pay the gas fees, right? right? And the gas is what we were talking about earlier. It's the transactional fee, right? Because NFT is the data, right? right? It's the data, it's the contract. Right. The, the Ethereum is what fuels the transaction. Right. So every, right? every time you buy or trade an NFT, there's gas fees included in that? Absolutely. And so what you can do is you can either have a friend send you Ethereum, mm -hmm. you know, really generous friend send you some Ethereum, mm -hmm. uh, or you just I need I need go and buy some. I need friends like that that'll just send me yeah, Ethereum. And then <laughs> number and then we can all be friends. <laughs> Those are the type of friends I need. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And another thing that is important to know, and, and we talk about this a little bit in the video, is you know gas fees fluctuate based on the market. Mm -hmm. So. I do recommend, you know, looking at some some websites that that will tell you what what gas fees are, when the best time to, to buy is, when the best time to right. sell is. That makes sense. You know, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, look for that. Awesome. And there is also an upgrade coming to Ethereum uh, around July or August that should uh, lower all gas fees uh, going forward. So that I, that should also help, I would imagine, with NFTs, the whole space. Absolutely. So I'm glad you you brought that up. It's been uh, one of the more controversial points about this whole craze. Um, so ETH two is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and uh, basically, you know, these 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 transaction requires a lot of computational power, mm -hmm. and computational power generates heat, mm -hmm. and that burns energy. And so because there's such a craze and there's so many transactions happening uh, at once, uh, it's creating a lot of heat and burning a lot of energy. Right. And, you know, there's there's different debates about about how severe it is, how much it's actually impacting the world. It's definitely something to to research right. and, and be up to date with. So, yeah, so ETH2 ETH ETH is actually it's what you were talking about. They are looking at more sustainable ways of of generating these transactions of sustaining these these transactions in this market because as we mentioned these transactions re require a lot of computational power right. and this computational power generates a lot of heat which burns energy so one of the things to look into is the difference between proof of work and proof of stake right and basically what that means is that instead of working computers to 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 fuel the transactions, proof mm -hmm. of work, right? right? The more you work, the more the more right. is fueling the industry. Proof of stake is what's going to redefine the sustainability, and that's right. 
how much Ethereum you hold, mm -hmm. and you know you can just infuse the the database with Ethereum as opposed to mining, right? Right. You, you, what, what your stake, what you already have, then that's going to be used to to fuel the market, to fuel the industry, right? And and it'll be more efficient overall, which is one of the main things that a lot of people bring up is always about uh, mining and energy, um, mm -hmm. the the use of energy. So that would fix that issue. That's what we hope. That's what we're looking. That's what we're looking towards. It's it's definitely a solution that's on the table. We got to see how it all plays out. So I think we've pretty much covered everything that um, that I wanted to ask, and I know that I know a lot of people have been asking me. Um, and you gave us a lot of information on NFTs, so I appreciate that. You know, let let us know anything you have going on. What uh, projects do you have coming in the future and all that? So on March twenty sixth, we are actually. Uh, representing an artist by the name of Jack Storms. We are having a hybrid auction. So um, it's a really special event. Uh, Jack Storms is actually a sculptor. He's a glass sculptor. He's had a couple of his pieces in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And he's actually created a sculpture that we are going to be auctioning for one Bitcoin. So there's going to be a physical sculpture. And then from those that sculpture, we're going to be creating five NFTs. <clears throat> and those NFTs are also going to go up for auction. So mm -hmm. if you want more information on that, how you can uh, bid, how you can be a part of the event, if you're local in Miami, you can go to bitbasil.miami and just sign up. Awesome. Awesome. And um, what? where can people follow you? So you can find us on www.vividreality.solutions if you want to see more about hybrid assets or how we digitize real world assets. And currently we're working with, with BitBasil. We're doing a lot of work with them. So if you want to check out some events coming up, we have one this month, we have one next month and a few coming up in the summer with regards to crypto art and, and crypto in general, you can visit bitbasil.miami. Amazing. Thank you so much, V. I really, really appreciate you giving us some time and uh, explaining to myself and the rest of us watching this video exactly what NFTs are and how they work, because a lot of us really don't know. So I appreciate it so, so much. We'll definitely have to have to do something else uh, sometime soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. I hope the information helps give a little bit of insight and uh, yeah, let's see what we create from here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found value in this content. Let me know if you guys want me to continue doing more interviews with different people in different spaces and just to get, you know, a different perspective in someone that's that's specializing in certain things in the crypto space. If you guys found value in this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit the like button as well and turn on that notification bell. If you guys are interested in following V, make sure that you go down to our description and you have her uh, social media links where you can follow her. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing day. I will see you guys on the next one. As always, peace and love.